Δεν θα μιλήσω για τις δυσκολίες που έχουμε στην άμυνα, συμμετέχοντας στην Ουκρανική άμυνα μέσα στο, από το τάγμα Αζόφ. Αυτό είναι το χρέος μου εναντί της πόλης μου, είναι το χρέος μου σαν άντρας. Good morning, everybody. It is Friday in Athens, and you just saw uh, a video intro, a scene from the Elensky World Tour from a couple of days ago in the Greek Parliament, where Elensky, while he was performing, decided to bring on a special Azov NAZI guest to the performance. And uh, yeah, the Ukraine ambassador in, uh, in Greece has come out with a statement saying and let me let me pull out the statement actually because the ukraine ambassador in greece is trying to walk back or he's trying to explain away the fact that you had uh while zelensky was performing he decided to bring on an nazi to speak to the greek parliament and the ukraine ambassador said that uh and i quote from the full statement that he released the russian propaganda machine targets the minds of free people It not only blurs reality by distorting facts, but creates a frightening atmosphere of hatred and fear. And he's referencing the fact that uh, the, the Greek population is outraged from uh, seeing an NAZI speak to the, uh, to the parliament during, during Elensky's performance. And uh, what else? The, the Ukraine ambassador is is saying that this guy isn't really, that Azov, they're not really NAZIs. Um, the ambassador's name, who's, what's the ambassador's name? Uh, Sergei Shutenko, Sergei Shutenko. Says, what else does he say? Uh, in order to distract the West from the enormous humanitarian catastrophe caused by the invasion, especially in Mariupol, Russia is using a wide range of disinformation techniques and myths Interesting projection, very interesting projection there. Uh, oh, here, here, here's, the, here's the good part, here's the good part. For many years, Russia has tried to plant in Greek minds the myth that the Azov Regiment is an independent paramilitary unit operating in Mariupol without discipline and obedience. We have stated on several occasions that in fact the Azov Voluntary Military Regiment was formed in 2014 in response to the Russian effort aimed at shattering the stability of the Donetsk region and its cities. It played an important role in the recapture of Mariupol in 2014 and was completely reformed and integrated into Ukraine's National Guard under strict administration by Ukraine's Interior Ministry of Internal Affairs of Ukraine. Since then, Mariupol has been enjoying peace and prosperity under the jackboot of the NAZIs, who for eight years have been holding the citizens of Mariupol pretty much hostage. But uh, very interesting statements from the Ukraine ambassador here in Greece, trying to whitewash the uh, Azov NAZIs. He doesn't even like actually approach in his statement. He doesn't approach too much the NAZI question. He just uh, throws out the scripted line that has been pre-prepared in, uh, in DC or maybe in some studios in Hollywood. The, the line that Azov was integrated into the Ukraine military, so hence it is not an NAZI militia or an NAZI battalion. Very much like the scripted lines that have been prepared for the media whenever you bring off Azov, their reply is, well, Zelensky's Jewish, how could he be supporting Azov? And they ignore the fact that Poroshenko is also supporting Azov, that Poroshenko started the war in 2014, 2015, actually under the orders of uh, Biden. But anyway, the, uh, the Ukraine ambassador decided to try and, uh, and whitewash the incident that took place here um, in the Greek parliament. And that brings us to the fact that the Elensky World Tour made a stop in Cyprus yesterday, and Elensky gave his performance in front of the Cypriot parliament. The Cypriot media is... Uh, ran reports saying that 
uh, Elensky's performance was so powerful and one of the videos that was prepared at the think tanks in, uh, in DC or in Hollywood, you know, the videos that accompany him during his performance, that the video that he played was so powerful that the translator of his speech actually fainted from her emotion. You know, when you're, when you're viewing a show like the one Elensky puts on, it's hard to not be overcome by the emotion. Just being in, just, just being part of his video presence, his, his video uh, performance is so powerful. Being a part of it, I'm sure causes many uh, females to, to faint. I'm sure they're just overcome with, with emotion of being witness to such star power. Uh, Elensky, as I predicted yesterday, did not uh, talk about, and by the way, that's true. That is a true story that the Cypriot media is running with, that uh, the translator actually fainted because she was overcome with emotion. Um, the, uh, <laughs> where was I? Uh, as I said uh, yesterday, he didn't mention, Elensky did not mention the, uh, the Turkish invasion of Cyprus in 74. He stayed away from it. You would have figured that it would have been the central part of his, uh, of his performance, but oddly enough, he didn't mention it. So he didn't mention it in Greece. He didn't mention it in Cyprus, the fact that Turkey invaded Cyprus in 1974 and still illegally occupies 36% of the island. But there's a reason for that. And I'm going to get to I'm going to get to that reason. But first, I just want to say that the Cypriot president, Anastasiadis, and the Speaker of the House, uh, Anita Dimitrio, they kind of uh, dug into Elensky. It seems like uh, while they were enthralled by his performance, and I'm sure they enjoyed the show, that he gave on, um, they did mention the fact that Alensky did not talk about the Turkish invasion, which seemed very odd because it fits perfectly with his, uh, with the show that he, that he performs. But um, hats off to the president of Cyprus and to the speaker of the, of the parliament for noting that Alensky did in fact ignore the, uh, the Cypriot invasion during his performance. And it was a bad look. It, it, I'm sure it's very embarrassing for the Cypriot government as well to, to have Alensky perform in the parliament and to not mention um, the Turkish invasion. Probably looks very embarrassing. Uh, one of the parties, Akel, who's a big party, they're, uh, they're kind of seen as the Communist Party, though they're pretty big-time capitalists. But they're the Communist Party, but they're big-time capitalists. Um, they actually boycotted the entire Alensky speech, and they boycotted it, referencing the fact that an NAZI Azov guy spoke in Greece, and they said they're not going to be a part of Alensky's speech to the Greek parliament. Now, I focus in on the fact that he didn't talk about the Turkish invasion because we all know why. Victoria Nuland was in Turkey, and she is trying to win Turkey over, and I believe she has approved a deal to provide Turkey with, uh, I believe, F-16s. So that's going to be a deal that uh, is going to be going through. And she's trying to get Turkey to sanction Russia. In other words, she's trying to move Turkey away from its neutral stance and more towards the, uh, the collective West stance of we must destroy Russia and we want regime change in Russia. We're going to see if Erdogan bites, if he uh, decides to side with Newland or if he um, continues to keep his, his neutral stance and continues to walk this uh, tightrope, this balancing act that he is effectively, effectively doing, I must admit. Uh, oh, by the way, if anyone's interested, the Alensky World Tour is going to be making a stop in Portugal next. It was in Ireland. It stopped in Greece, then it went to Cyprus, and I believe their next stop is going to be in, uh, in Portugal. I don't know if there's going to be tickets available to the show, to be honest, because from what I hear, wherever Alensky uh, decides to perform, it's pretty much sold out, and it's usually only a performance to uh, members of the parliament, but I'm sure that you'll be able to watch it on Portuguese state TV and uh, Portuguese television channels, so you'll be able to watch the performance there. and. You know, very much like he did in Greece, bringing an NAZI to the performance, an NAZI Azov guy. Maybe he will surprise the Portuguese uh, public by bringing on, I don't know, maybe some guest speakers as well. Who knows? 
Alensky is definitely full of surprises when he performs. That's what makes him, you know, the hottest ticket in town. <laughs> A little tug in cheek there, but it is kind of true. It is kind of true. He is the hottest ticket in town, isn't he? But going back to Newland. So Newland was in Cyprus and uh, I'm going to play a video where Newland was actually speaking to the uh, press. And she said, she made a big, big error where she said, now I'm going to go to the north part of Cyprus and speak with the president there. And uh, the ambassador in Cyprus, the U.S. ambassador in Cyprus, uh, immediately told Newland that, uh, well, the United States doesn't recognize the occupied north of Cyprus, and as thus, he's not the president of the north of Cyprus. And Newland uh, immediately was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yes, I'm going to be meeting with Mr. Tartar, not president. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and she's like, well, it's been a long time since I've been to Cyprus. Keep in mind, this is the puppet master. This is the puppet master of Zelensky and the puppet master of the entire war that the whole world is uh, going through right now. The war in Ukraine, as well as this economic war of attrition. This is the woman that is orchestrating all of this. And now I'm gonna go up to uh, the north and spend a little time uh, with, with President Tatar and talk to him about uh, the United States continued support for efforts to resolve the Cyprus issue. I guess it was a mistake, right? What do I call him? Mr. Tatar. Mr. Tatar. Yes, I apologize. I. It's been a long time since I've been in Cyprus. We obviously uh, refer to him as uh, Mr. Tatar, and uh, yes. Oh, I found out that Jeffrey Pyatt is still ambassador in Greece, and the new ambassador is going to be coming soon. But uh, Jeffrey Pyatt, if people don't know, he was the ambassador in Ukraine during the Obama-Biden EU coup. I thought that was an interesting. Uh, uh, fact. I thought he had left already, but it looks like Payet is still here. And he's, uh, he's a regime change specialist and, uh, and a very, very big uh, Russia hater. I mean, he despises Russia, despises Russia. But uh, I think that explains a lot as to why Greece is in the mess it's in. So Newland, after she made her uh, embarrassing error in Cyprus, Details came out with regards to what she was doing in Greece. And she gave an interview to the Greek newspaper, Gathi Merini. And basically what she was doing in Greece is she was blowing apart the East Med pipeline. I mean, she blew it apart. So the pipeline, which is going to supposedly provide gas to not only to, to Israel and Egypt, but to Cyprus, to Greece, and then further on to Bulgaria and much of Europe. And this was going to be a big replacement to uh, to Russian gas. This pipeline has been going on now for 15 years. And uh, Newland came into town and she gave an interview to the Greek newspaper Gathi Merini and this is what she said. Quote, we don't need to wait for 10 years and spend billions of dollars on this stuff in reference to the pipeline. We need to move the gas now and we need to use gas today as a transition to a greener future 10 years from now, we don't want a pipeline. 10 years from now, we want to be green. And then Newland stressed that right now, we need the gas. So we've got to use LNG and we've got to use electricity connections that we can do more quickly. This is what Newland said. She called on Turkey, Greece, Israel, Egypt, and Cyprus to work together to make this happen. 15 years of LNG BS that I have been hearing while living in Greece and Cyprus, that we're gonna create this glorious pipeline and we're gonna get this LNG out of the Mediterranean. And we've almost had conflicts. Greece has almost come into conflict with Turkey as to who has the right to this gas in the Mediterranean and all of this stuff about this gas for the last 15 years and Newland came into town and she blew it apart. Blew it apart. Of course, it's a big win for Turkey, a massive win for Turkey because, you know, Turkey and Erdogan were not too, uh, too happy with the fact that Egypt, Israel, Greece, and Cyprus 
we're working to create these uh, these pipelines to go into Europe and Turkey was was saying well these pipelines are in the Mediterranean so we have a stake in them as well and it was this big geopolitical uh, row and Newland came in and she just blew it wide open she just said forget about it screw the pipelines we don't need them it's all about LNG it's all about electricity connections whatever that that means Greece right now they're reigniting their coal uh, their coal facilities by the way that they shut down they're starting to reignite those because they realize that uh europe is screwed when it comes to energy and so yeah newland completely blew that apart i'm hearing from various sources that mitsotakis and the foreign minister dendias were so upset with what newland said that they actually went to Pyatt and they complained about it of which Pyatt, i'm sure probably told them to buzz off <laughs> So yeah, Newland came in and she was just a freaking wrecking ball on Greece and Cyprus, a wrecking ball. So let's get into what should be the main story. And it is the main story and it has to do with the UN uh, Human Rights Council vote that took place. Oh, by the way, I've got a reverse clown world story that I'm going to get to as well. So we had the vote to uh, suspend Russia from the UN Human Rights Council. A human, a human rights council of which the United States is a member of, of which Saudi Arabia is a member of. But you know, Saudi Arabia, props to Saudi Arabia, and I'll tell you why, but Saudi Arabia is a member to the Human Rights Council of, I believe the UK is a member. And I find it interesting that this is the, humans, the same Human rights, rights Council that's not fighting for Assange, for Julian Assange, while the UK extradites him to the United States where I'm sure Assange will will meet a terrible fate, unfortunately. Uh, this, is, this is the Human Rights Council of which Russia is going to get uh, kicked out of. And so the vote was in favor of suspending Russia from the Human Rights Council. Council. And let me, let me give you the uh, number. It was uh, 93 votes in favor of suspending Russia, 24 against, and 58 abstentions. Now, it may look bad on the surface that Russia was uh, suspended from the Human Rights Council. Not that this is a big deal, in my opinion. I don't think this is that huge of a deal. But when you look at the votes, 93 votes in favor, 24 against, and 58 abstentions, if you add up the against, the abstentions, as well as the countries that were not present, that were not present, you actually get to a number that is more than the 93 votes in favor. That number is 99. So when you add up the abstentions, and an abstention is pretty much a diplomatic way of saying Russia should not be suspended, you get 24 no's, 58 abstentions, 24 no's, and 17 that did not even show up, which is another way of protest. It's another way of saying, well, it's a diplomatic way of telling the US, okay, you're putting pressure on me to vote in favor of kicking Russia out but I don't want to do it, so I'm just not going to show up. So it's kind of a way to, to get around the US pressure, as is an abstention. But uh, it's not that bad, actually. If, if you look at the number, it's 99 against the 93 who voted to suspend Russia. Either way, Russia is suspended from the Human Rights uh, Council. Uh, Libya was the last country that was suspended from the Human Rights Council. And when they suspended Libya from the Human Rights Council, from the Human Rights Council NATO went in and bombed the crap out of Libya. And they, uh, they regime changed Gaddafi by sodomizing him, which was caught on video. And then Hillary Clinton cackling to, uh, I believe it was CBS News. We came, we saw, he died. That's the Human Rights Council that Russia was suspended from. Interestingly enough, Brazil abstained, Saudi Arabia abstained, UAE abstained, Kenya abstained, and Mexico abstained. Very key countries that abstained, key countries. China, if there was any doubt that China is not in full support of Russia, well, China voted no. They said Russia should not be kicked out of the Human Rights Council. So once again, as me and Alexander have been saying for a long, long time now, China is 110% in support of Russia. China understands that if this regime change is successful in Russia, well, then they are next. 
Serbia voted to uh, kick Russia out of the Human Rights Council, as did Hungary. And there are a lot of people that, saying, that are saying, well, Serbia, Hungary, hung Hungary's not really, Hungary is just taking a neutral stance. So I think Hungary is picking its fights. And this was a fight that wasn't that meaningful for Hungary. So they voted with the US pressure and the EU, the EU pressure. I'm sure all the uh, EU officials told Hungary, you better vote yes. And I'm sure Hungary said, you know what? Let's just vote yes. There's no reason to, to open up too many fronts in this fight that we have with the globalists. But Serbia also voted yes. And, and while many Serbs were upset, with this, I believe that Serbia coordinated with Russia. They told Russia that they were gonna vote yes because they were coming under a lot of pressure from Europe, from the EU, from the US. And I'm sure Russia told them, you know what? Vote to suspend this, vote yes. It's not that big a deal. Pick your fights. You don't need the uh, US pressure at this moment in time for something as meaningless and as empty as the Human Rights Council. So. Anyway, that is the uh, that was the big news from the Human Rights Council. Some more news is that uh, Janet Yellen warned China the other day. She said, as did Wendy Sherman, by the way, as did Wendy Sherman. They both warned China that if China continues to support Russia, and if China even dares to invade Taiwan, that they will face the same exact sanctions that uh, Russia is uh, is facing. So they sent a very a uh, stern, serious warning to China. Stop supporting Russia and don't you dare invade Taiwan. Otherwise, you're next. We'll see how China responds to that. And finally, the last final story before I get into a reverse clown wolf story is that a uh, Kremlin spokesperson, spokesman, Dmitry Peskov, was giving an interview to Sky News and he said this to Sky News. This is an interesting quote. He said, Moscow hopes the Russian military operation in Ukraine might end in the near future, possibly in the coming days. I thought that was an interesting quote. And Peskov noted that the military is reaching its goals. The Russian military is reaching its goals and that the operation will end either with an agreement or through meeting its military goals. What that means, let me know in the comments down below. Does it mean that we're close once again to an agreement? Because this would go counter to what Lavrov said the other day. Lavrov said that Ukraine's proposals are going in the exact opposite direction of Moscow's demands, of the Kremlin's demands. And uh, Peskov is maybe hinting that an agreement is closer. Who knows? Maybe he's just not trying to... Uh, to fool Sky News and the UK uh, media and, uh, and 10 Downing Street for that matter. But uh, I found it to be a very interesting statement. Maybe the end of the operation is the, is the final battle against the uh, Donbass Azov Ukraine military that is stuck in the cauldron. Maybe that's what Peskov means when he says in the coming days. Who knows? I don't know. But uh, that, those were the statements from Peskov. And uh, he said it to, uh, to the UK media. Liz Truss has been making all kinds of statements, uh, belligerent statements against Russia and the Kremlin. And, uh, and the fact that things are never going back with, uh, with Russia. We're never going to have diplomatic ties with Russia. And we need to send more military aid and all of these things. Liz Truss, I'm sure, is, is, is venting because she was completely embarrassed by, uh, by Lavrov when she went to, to the Kremlin to, uh, to meet with Lavrov before the, the conflict started. Remember, Liz Truss was the one that also said that, uh, also confused the, uh, the Baltic Sea with the Black Sea. <laughs> and then when she was talking with Lavrov, she, was, uh, she, she didn't understand how the translators worked and she was speaking over the translators. I mean, she was, she made a complete and utter fool of herself. So I'm sure she's kind of trying to, to talk tough and make amends for the foolish behavior that, uh, that she exhibited when she was in Moscow. So let's get to our reverse clown world. And this is a reverse clown world because it's a good story, actually. The uh, Finnish authorities 
they are now saying that uh, Finland's seizure of the Russian artwork was wrong. They didn't say that in their statement, but they're kind of saying, you know what? These sanctions are crazy. We're, uh, they're very confusing, and we're going to work to return that Russian artwork that we seized. So in my Clown World story yesterday morning, I noted how Finland had seized Russian art, 46 million worth of Russian art, that was heading back to the Tretakov uh, gallery and the Hermitage Museum. And I'm sure that Finland did this under the orders of the EU and the US. Well, it looks like that this was such an embarrassment for the reputation of Finland that they uh, came to their senses. And they said, you know what? This is a bridge too far. This is just getting too, too crazy. It's, it's becoming too clown world. Clown worldish, if that's a word. And uh, they're now doing the right thing and they're going to be working to get that artwork back to the museum where it belongs. And uh, that's, uh, that's great news. Good on Finland. Big up to, uh, to Finland for, um, for making things right and for not letting the hysteria take over. And that's important. You always have to look for those, you know, small rays of light in this uh in these crazy times these hysterical crazy times and dangerous times so finland gives us hope it does give us hope that there is a way back from from the abyss and that will leave it there i think the duran.locals.com everybody check out alexander's channel uh check out the duran's channel we're doing all kinds of great videos. Alexander's doing very, very good deep dive analysis. The Duran is doing deep dive analysis along with as many guests as we can, as we can put on the show as well. And uh, that is it. Take care.